Okay, folks. Good morning. I have a Father's Day special today. The theme is going to be painting the ziggurat we have over here. This is a 3D printed ziggurat that uh, Joe Coton bought. And the resolution on this is just not very good. Hold on. Let me see if I can change this. No, we're going to have to flip this thing around. Never seems to work this way. That's good. Let's try this. And flip. Now let's get this into position correctly. And we'll try it this way now. Okay. Good morning, Mr. Carter from Mars. So this is a 3D print. I don't know exact, exactly who it's from, but I did. It did have to take some cleanup, and uh, and the cleanup that it had is, um, and I'll show you guys one of one of the issues is, or I'll attempt to show you guys one of the issues on the cleanup is. Let's look at say this spot right here. I don't know if it'll come up on the camera, but no, it won't come up here. There's almost like when you use a hot glue gun. There's the places where it releases and it leaves a little, almost like a little string. And I had to clean up several of those. So um, I thought I had gotten them all. But you, these details are way too small to be using like sandpaper or something like that. So as a matter of fact, the little crenellations here on the top is... Um, going to be um i i couldn't cut into them i used the back of the exacto knife and just pressed down to kind of free them of of these extra little almost like flashing that they have so we need to get moving on this because one of the things i wanted to do i didn't get around to doing it uh, a few days ago was to um go ahead and base this in black and i didn't uh, I didn't do that. So that's the first thing we got to do so that I can dry and we can start doing the dry brushing. And um, I got uh, a cool idea on this. And, uh, you know, hopefully to get this done. Now, everything's 3D printed on here. It, it actually has some a kind of a texture. Let's see if I, there you go. It almost looks like diamond plate. Okay. And this, that's okay. I mean, you, you can't really do anything about that. It was also here on the base section, this flat section here. So what I did is I used natural sand, which is the th thinner version of what I normally base on. I haven't used it. I've used it only on my desert troops. I just put a very thin coat here. Let's see if we can get that to come out with a glare, you know, to cover some of this diamond plate effect so we can mold this in the ground color here of, uh, of the desert. So... First things first. Now, Joe went ahead and did this. He went ahead and put a, uh, a magnetic uh, part on the back, on the back or, or a magnet strip. So now we can just attach this and then we can move it here and not get paint all over ourselves. So that's the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and paint this black so that this can dry. We'll work on the Pope stuff for a little bit and then we'll come back. No, I'm not going to be tempted to work on the, um, the Amorites just yet. Uh, I'm still under supervision. I don't think I'm going to break into that yet. <laughs> as much as I'd like to just roll right into them. Okay. Uh, where is the stuff that we're going to need? Okay, we're going to use the old surface primer from Vallejo. This has a thin texture, and it's going to be... Let's see. Again, let me try and see if I can get that in the, in the video with the glare. Normally, I don't want glare, but here the glare kind of helps you to see what the detail is. There's some real thin lines here, which I think actually kind of help the situation, not make it worse to give it some detail. But, of course, it's going to be out of scale. This is all mud, mud bricks with a... made of mud bricks, and I think the ones on the end, I forget what they were. They're baked or something like that. Old school building here. Before I ever used this Viejo thin, Viejo surface primer, somebody mentioned in one of the comments uh, that they had used this, and they said make sure to mix it really well. So 
they've now scared me into where I feel like I'm mixing it a lot more than I need to. But all right, and let's put this in a on a surface where. I didn't get any black on me yet. Yet. All right. As I like to say, I'm painting this for somebody else. So if it doesn't turn out well, I don't care. No, nah, it's not true. But you know, one thing I have painted things for other people. And sometimes you tend to jump in more than you would on your own thing. And as an experienced painter, I still occasionally run into the situation where um, because it's not mine, I'm a little bit more willing to just jump in. And that's as an experienced painter, that's usually, that's my biggest fear, so to speak, is you don't know what direction you're going to do as you end up not doing anything. And um, so sometimes when you paint things for other people, it actually goes faster than if you were painting it for yourself. So, um, all right. So we're going to take some of this stuff right here and we're just going to spread it around. And this stuff is really good about getting in all the nooks and crannies. We're going to make sure we get that in there first. And this is going to dry for a little bit before we can mess with it. This may end up taking two coats of this. But this is going. This would go a lot smoother than if I was just using standard acrylic paint. But Joe is supposedly coming tomorrow, and if everything goes well, we're going to be playing the enemies of this army of his. So it makes sense for me to try to get his camp done. Be away, Kemp, for him to be able to use it tomorrow. Makes sense to me, anyways. All right, this may not actually work. Let's try something risky. You ready? Let's not do that. I was going to just drip it right on it, which is probably okay. I could just spread it around, but nah, let's not do that. No drinking today. <laughs> end up like a soup on here. Yeah, you can spray paint this, but then the problem is, is you're not going to get it everywhere. So you're still going to have to come back and hand paint and invariably you're going to end up covering over some of the details. And I kind of like this texture to show because I think it kind of works for it instead of against it. And I don't remember what the name of the, um, this is an Etsy seller where Joe got this. If you watch um, an unboxing video I did on, on my channel, there's a video there. And I did the unboxing of uh, some of his troops uh, a couple of weeks ago, I believe. And uh, you'll find the seller on, the seller's name is mentioned on there if you guys are interested in something like this. I do not know because I did not purchase it. That was Joe's doing. But it did have quite a bit of flash or those little furry, stringy things. So. Okay, this is a first coat here on the front of this. 
See if you guys can see some of the texture that this has. Perfect. Ah, where's my coffee? It's what's it doing hanging out over here? Mm. So normally I'm really good about not ordering uh, things ahead of time before I need them. But as a friend of mine used to say, I got a wild hair up my ass and decided to get those Amorites. Mainly it was Joe's fault. He has those, those uh, spearmen, those Amorite spearmen that look really cool. I wanted to, I wanted to paint them up, and found an interesting army in the first place. So maybe we can uh, get these poke guys done soon, so we can start working on them. But we do have one more thing that's on order, not for the Amorites, that uh, when it arrives, we'll do an unboxing video of that. I know some people mentioned that they like doing unboxing videos. I love watching them. I love watching other people doing unboxing videos. Not on everything, but, you know, stuff that is of my interest. So it's kind of like buying and opening things up yourself, and you don't have to spend any money for it. So that's always helpful. The other thing's going to be a while getting here. It's coming from a far away place for another Etsy seller, but we'll see if that's. Uh, we'll do a video on that when that comes in. Good morning, Harvey. This is the one that's going to be tricky to hold on to and not paint myself all over. Let's see, do I have anything metallic? That Let's try this before I... Yeah, there you go. Perfect. I don't want to get this stuff all over me. Like I already just did some. It's 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 water based, but it's definitely harder to get off your fingers than regular paint. I don't know why, but it is. So yeah, the biggest problem with this thing would be. If I'm, um, if I'm painting this, I got to water down this paint so much to be able to get in all these little crevices on the individual bricks that it's going to leave all these spots that pop. And that's probably still going to happen, but this, with this, uh, surface primer, it is a lot more thin down and gets in all the places a lot better than even thin down enamel paint. So it's got some kind of polyurethane type properties to it. And that's what the, that's what the container says. So who knows if that's true, but uh, it flows really, really well. So I'm really happy with it. I really haven't gotten an idea how durable it is. Uh, ultimately, I don't need this to be very durable because uh, I do seal all this stuff. And um, but um, I'm very happy with how it flows. I was using um, 
model master acryl black for all of them, and brushing it on for all of my basic needs. And then um, the source for it kind of dried out here locally. And paint is one of those things I really don't want to order out. And I think it got discontinued, honestly. Um, it was available at one store here in town. And a little while ago, I'm not sure exactly sure when, but uh, testers got bought by Rustoleum, uh, the people that do that outdoor type paint, like if you want to paint a door or something like that. Um, and they just and they are condensing some of their paint lines, or so I understand. So the black acryl got discontinued the the black the flat black acryl got discontinued they still make the gloss black acryl which i was using that one for a little bit but if games workshop paints and these type bottles the old school ones i'll show them to you these if these paints win the award for best ceiling type paint because I've had some of these for like not 30 years but 25 years then the worst paint goes to model master because you literally have used them once and then sometimes they just you can never even use them a second time because the ceiling on the on the lids is so bad that air gets in there and and whatever the Model Master Acryl is on there gets... Uh, the reason I was using Model Master Acryl is it was inexpensive. It covered really well. Um, and it, it seemed to be more durable than just a standard acrylic paint. So I was really happy with it. But after a couple of uses, sometimes even one, I go to try to open it again. It was impossible to open the bottle because the paint gets very elastic-like. Um, you'll try to undo it, and as you pull it out, it, it could see that the paint is just uh, stuck to it, you know. And uh, I was happy with it, except that it did that. Uh, I would have been happy buying more of the flat black, but they didn't have it. So anyhow, um, I was kind of at an impasse. Um, so I decided to start using Model Master um, Enamel. And th what was happening is it was getting goopy. And I was thinning it down, and it was just too much of a pain. So uh, I was looking for another source. I heard people using this particular product, and I've been happy with this product since. But um, they kind of did it to themselves by discontinuing something. Um, Master Militum do a 15 millimeter Aztec Ziggurat, and I think it's eight by eight, eight by eight. Man, it's big. Yeah, this is like two millimeters. Joe decided to get it smaller, and I think he made the right call. This is, I, I prefer train smaller than the figures to be more in what I like to call a game scale. I forget what the exact dimensions of this particular thing is, but I think the largest dimension is like 100 feet. So it's, it's not a huge thing by any stretch of the imagination, but in real life. And uh, a good portion of it stands. I understand some of it got damaged in the Gulf War by small arms fire. And um, But the top section, I think everything, uh, it's up to this level. Everything above here is just like a, it doesn't, not really exist and collapsed. It's mud bricks or, I think the ones on the end, the. I think it's all made of mud bricks, and the ones on the uh, the the edges are like uh, uh, fired or extra baked or something like that. I forget what the terminology is. I read it, and I was like, "Oh, okay, that's cool." But yeah, it still stands. It was not one of those things that Didn't exist. It's funny how something can be so old 
and it's still around. And all it takes is something like a modern war or something like that to make it fall apart. Happy Father's Day. Three racks of spare ribs, Texas Oaks. Nice model. Three racks, that'd be plenty. You they have to share those or? <laughs> nice, I like ribs. Ribs are. You threw all yours away. The Model Master Acro, huh? I think the worst pain of all time that I've ever encountered, and I haven't encountered it in a long time, but it still, it still wins the award, is the old, remember the little testers bottles? Not those. Pactra. Pactra was like testers bottles, but now the bottle is was plastic. And it was... I don't know if the inside of the bottle had ridges on it, but the outside of it certainly did. It was just god awful paint. Um, god awful paint. Pactra. Yeah. I'm sure there's worse paint than that, but the award for goes to that. I'll tell you what though, and I had this conversation with um, with my daughter recently. Because she does do, she does do painting. She doesn't paint figures or anything like that. She does do like uh, paints with watercolors and stuff like that, which I think are very is very unforgiving, uh, personally. But painting with watercolors or watercolors are very unforgiving. Um, what's more important than what paint you use of what brush you use, because the brushes we had as kids, you know those nylon ones that you'd get. What a piece of crap. You know, I, I would take one of the, I would be fine painting, you know, using old school paints, even like those testers and stuff. Cause I would all, always thin them down. I could always thin them down and just use like the brushes that are available now instead of the stuff that those nylon brushes that are, they're shaped like this too. They flare out and they're, fl you can't do anything with that. You can't do anything with that. But yeah, we were kids, what do we know? They still sell them. I went into Michael's or something like that uh, a couple of weeks ago, and there was all these hobby products that are so bad that would just discourage people that would just get started in the hobby from it would, <laughs> from continuing it. Probably uh, horrible stuff. Like, why do you guys even make that? It's bad enough that they make the testers glue still, you know, the squeeze tube one, but. Those type of paints are just, unf I mean, those, yeah, those, those type of paint brushes are just unforgivable to be doing stuff like that. I guess they find some sucker to buy them. Huh? There's lots of cheap brushes you could buy, and you could do a lot better than those damn nylon brushes that, they don't even come to a point. They're just flared, and I don't know. You guys know what I'm talking about. We all had them. Uh oh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh, nothing new. Just looked like it. Got to put my glasses on to read the comments that are over on the side. The stuff dries pretty quick, so we're gonna we're gonna start dry brushing this as soon as we can. I want to get this done today, and I'm probably gonna be able to paint till about nine. I'm guessing, which is about three hours. And I'd like to get this thing done today. I'd like to get it done on camera. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll get it done today. It'd just be nice to get it done on camera. This is actually the part I do not enjoy painting, is the priming section. Actually, the cleanup section's worse. I figure 
you know, if you buy a model, and maybe 3D printing is probably not fair to tell them that because it's it's a difficult media. I don't know how much you paid for this thing, but it wasn't very expensive. So you can't expect uh, the vendor really to clean up the model, so to speak, for you. But um, I do not like cleaning the flash off stuff. I almost, when you're talking about figures or something like that, I, I feel like it's the responsibility of the of the people that make the castings for them not to be a significant amount of that. Maybe I'm just being unrealistic, but damn it, I value my time. I don't want to spend time doing that. And it's not fun. Right, let's move this a little bit closer. All right. Let's go ahead and put this in a position where I can see some of the glare off of it. And let's see if we miss some spots, which of course they did, or they came in thinner than I may have wanted. Now, the good news about this is this particular model is 3D printed in a sand type color, and this is going to be very sandy looking. So, those two things kind of go together. So, if it doesn't get covered 100%, you probably won't be able to tell. I'm giving away all the secrets. You guys see stuff painted like, I don't do Warhammer, but there's people that paint Warhammer stuff. It's just incredible. You're wondering, how the heck can these guys do all this, man? It looks foolproof. Oh, well, there's mistakes in there. They're just not man enough to show you where they are. Well, I don't care. <laughs> I'm kind of winging this, and uh, I don't have a mission statement for my painting stuff. God, I don't know if I can live with myself just having said that dislike that term very much but if it's anything to encourage you guys to paint and see that I make mistakes and that I can fix them and that at the end it's not really a mistake at all because it can't be seen instead of uh, people that people that paint and and go man this just isn't turning out how these masters look like yeah, that's bullshit. Those guys masters make mistakes too. They just don't show you what they are. You know? And um, sometimes the best thing you can do on a project when it's not turning out right is just keep going and not be discouraged by what it looks like when you're 3% through with it because just keep just keep at it and it'll it'll work itself out. And uh, just even priming this is an example. If I didn't know any better, I'd be like, well, this isn't covering very well, or this isn't turning out how I want it to. Let me quit and do something else. And um, you'll never get it finished that way. So my words of encouragement, but um, I've been guilty of it as well. I've been guilty of, ah, I don't like this, it's turning out. Let me go to something different. If I would have just stuck with it, it all work itself out. Yeah, these folks, there's some magicians out there for painting. And um, they make mistakes too. Let's see. If we can see anything significant. The main thing is, is you don't want, you don't, you want this edge here to make sure that you, you've got um, that cover. Now, I may end up doing a dark wash on here to bring some of this detail out. I'm not sure yet. I'm kind of winging it to see how this goes because uh, normally if this had been something that I had purchased and it had this kind of a detail on it, I would have been pissed off because you don't want that kind of stuff. Um, the little 
etchings. Um, but in the case of this, yeah, I think it adds to the look of it. So. All right, I think we're going to need to set this off to the side for this to dry. Of course, now I poured too much. Well, it happens. Just like anything paint, you you're, you're end up wasting more than you used. Even with a wet palette, it makes the situation better, but still, even with a wet palette. Well, let me see if I can get in here and get, this is a kind of a difficult place to get into. Flash on figures is responsibility to vendor. Amen, brother. It's due to poor molds or poor quality when casting. Yeah, I mean, you clean them up, but it's like it makes you, you know, it's like they're not doing their part. So a lot of companies I've noticed are going to, not a lot of companies, several companies, are going to uh, plastic figures. And, uh, well, some companies just do plastic figures, but some companies that did the other ones, uh, the standard figures are going to plastic figures. And I'm wondering it's if it's because, you know, as you use these lead molds, I still call them lead, even though they're not made of lead, right? <laughs> right, China, you're not making things out of lead? Uh, I always call them lead because I'm old school. But... Um, you know, after time, they wear out because they're some kind of a polyurethane type rubber mold or whatever, and they get worn out. But um, I have a feeling these plastic injection molding, the molds last a lot longer, and that might be why they're going to that. Um, take this off so there we go so we can get a good seal yeah that's leftover paint from the previous time and you only gripe about this stuff is it's a lot messier than a regular paint meaning you got to be careful closing it up more than regular paint bottle we're going to let this dry a little bit drop this in our water Yeah, flash on the figures. Don't like that. Don't like uh, having a deal with flash on the figures. Let's set this back off to the side. Let's take a look at the castle there that I was working on for for Mitch. That's mostly done, and it looks extra extra white and dry brushed there on this video. It's not that bright in real life. It doesn't look like it's that bright, but uh, we'll take this to him as well. So. Yes, the ziggurat is made of uh, mud bricks. Yes, traditional molds wear out. The plastic injection molds last far longer, but are so more expensive to acquire. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, I don't know anything about that stuff. I think it's pretty. Uh, I think it's pretty fascinating. Um, anyhow, so this little castle is almost done. I think what I want to do is instead of going back and painting my my papist figures there for a little bit, I think we're going to try to finish this so we can give this to Mitch as well. Now this has actually been uh, sealed. I've actually spray sealed it. I got ahead of myself, but it looks like there's a little bit of dirt here, and we've got something that's it may end up being a fire or something like you know this is a toy or something, but we're going to call this some happy tree they decided to plant there. Uh, the owner of this castle wanted to be some kind of arborist, so that's what we're going to put there. So let's get that uh, let's get that painted. Let's get our uh, wet palette here. That should give us enough to paint here for the next I don't know 20 minutes or something like that. So the ziggurat base color is dry enough that we can fool with that. And it's been I swear like two two weeks since I had it on there since I opened this up and. It's a little drier than I like, but I think we're gonna leave this. I'm not gonna take a side trip to make that wet. All right, we got we got dirt down here, so we're gonna use our traditional dirt color that I use for everything, which is this not leather brown. It's his cousin. Uh, 
chocolate brown. Chocolate brown. And let's use a brush we don't love too much. One that's not too expensive. <laughs> um, let's grab this. Oh. oh, still some in there. Perfect. All right. The only thing we're interested in doing down here is... this area down here. And I'm purposefully making it more watery than I normally would be. More watery, more thinned down. I think that's the only little bit of ground cover that there is on here. And happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. We'll be doing fathery stuff later. Of course, you could just say, what do you want for Father's Day? I want you to leave me alone. I want to paint. <laughs> uh, we got that coming up in about a week or so. A week? A week and a day, something like that. The last week of this month, I'm, I'm going to be playing Bachelor for a week. So we'll get a lot of painting in there, get some paint sessions. Hopefully get some cool stuff done. some new stuff to show you guys. Okay, so we just did a little bit of dirt there. We're not gonna, this is not good, we're not gonna enter this in some museum of art, but we can do a lot better. Oh, Chateau du Rodebeg. <laughs> Yeah, now this is, uh, I saw this, Mitch has had this a long time. It came, it was painted all like this, looked like shit, but it's actually a decent molding. Um, it looks like something that would be a part of a fish tank, but I don't think it is because it normally a fish tank stuff would be hollow or something like that, where you could put something that lets bubbles go, but it definitely has that look to it. Um, as soon as I saw it, it immediately reminded me of like a, a Welsh, style castle and sometimes the Welsh castles have these squared towers instead of rounded ones but it definitely gave me the the look of that so I'm like yeah we could paint that thing up we'll make that look a lot better than it does right now that's what the intent is um let's go ahead Chateau de, de Rodevega yeah Ever so slightly. Castle ever so slightly. Actually, this should probably be called uh, 
Schloss Harbach because uh, his heraldry has this potted plant. And there's a son of a bitch right there. There's this potted plant that's in his heraldry. <laughs> Look it up. Look up Harbach heraldry. You'll see what I'm talking about. It looks like some freaking potted plant. Dude, even a, a chicken would be better than a potted plant is, uh, to fight for. What do you fight for? Uh, a vegetable. <laughs> Vegetation. The angry gardener. There's a Bavarian spa town called Harbach. Yep. I bet there is. <clears throat> I bet there is. I don't know if his family is Bavarian originally. I'm not sure he knows. Let's see if I can ask him tomorrow. I'm gonna ask him, hey, do you know where you're, what part of Germany your family's from? I'll say, yes. That's it. Does it know? <laughs> What part of Germany is your fam family from? Yes. Okay. Time for his plant. Time to plant his plant there. Let's get us some green. Uh, we're going to need this. I'm going to use this as a base. This is... Uh, Black green from Vallejo. Why aren't there any more German hobby products? Germans make precision stuff. They should be making some of this, some of these things. I don't know that I've come across anything hobby related that's made in Germany and there's no reason for that. Come on, Germans, get on the ball. In uh, French products, I've only come across, well, this thing. Model trains and scenery. That's right. Knock, right? Uh, Kibri. Uh, man, I don't remember trains anymore, but dad used to do them and I don't remember all the marking, right? Um, what else? I'm probably missing another couple. I've seen the knock stuff. I really don't like the knock stuff I've seen. It just seems like it's extremely brightly colored for no reason. I think Kibri's German. Roco mini tanks, those are from Austria. I remember it's my first catalog I saw that in the early 80s as a kid. And I was like, wow, this is super cool. I always wanted to do a train set like in a world war, in world war in a World War II setting, you know, like German rail yard with some cars with taking some tanks to the front or something like that. But 
They don't have time for everything, so. Model dinosaurs. Oh. I don't remember what the name of those things are. Yeah, they make precision stuff. I should get back into it and make those things. Stop subbing everything out to the evil people, the evil country. A little bit of this to lighten it up. And let's get crazy and put some yellow on here. Schleich. Yeah, that's the name of those things. A lot of that stuff is really, really nice looking. Really, really nice looking. Schleich. Yeah, it's hard to find in the United States here products that are made in Germany. I'm sure that there are, but I mean, just in my normal travels, you know, and many countries like that, Italy, France, you just don't see stuff like that made anymore. Okay, here's a happy little world's largest marijuana plant that is keeping it for himself. <laughs> oh. If you're into that sort of thing, you wouldn't know. Okay, I think we're going to leave this as, as the dirt color here. All right, is, is, is Ziggy dry here? Let's see if Ziggy's done. I think so. Stuff dries pretty quick. Excellent. That's what we're here for. We're here to do the ziggurat, not some potted plant inside of a Schloss. Schloss Harbach. Yeah, it should be nicer to your neighbors so they don't destroy your castle like this, right? All right. Putting battle flag transfers on hoplites at the moment. Oh, I didn't realize battle flag made, made stuff other than flags. That's cool. Transfers, huh? Hoplites. Okay, so. I need to... Paint this the base color first. All right, we're not going to need a wet palette because if anything, we're going to want this paint drier than than not. So I'm thinking that might be too pale. We may get a little bit of dry brushing at that, but our base color is going to be this guy right here. Okay, this is the cheapo paint deco art fawn now, so here's the funny thing is they don't make hardly anything in this country either 
for shame. But if you'd think that they wouldn't make something in this country, you'd think that this is the stuff that would come from China, right? Because these are less than a dollar a piece for... Now, it's not high quality paint, but it's still paint. It still comes in a container. It has a label and it's less than a dollar. So it's pretty, pretty cheap. This stuff's made in the United States. This stuff's made in the United States. What's the other brand that I have? Where's my black? My black is folk art. I got a folk art over here. I haven't opened this one yet. It's not my black, but this one's made in the United States. So these three brands are all made in the US and they might be related somehow. Uh, look, it even says made in USA. And these are some of the cheapest products ever. So you can't tell me that they can't make things in this country. This is a big freaking country. You can just take a state, you know, nobody cares about, like North Dakota, and just put all factories in there. We just make all our shit there. You know, it's not like the Canadians are going to cross the border and take it over, right? But, yeah, this is made by Plaid. This is also Plaid. So Plaid must be like a main company. They do make brushes and stuff like that. Of course, those brushes are not made in the United States, but um, Norcross, Norcross, Georgia. That's not far from here. Uh, also, Norcross, Georgia. So, and then these guys are made in Kentucky, I think. Yeah, Stanford, Kentucky. So they can make cheap products that people will buy in this country. So there's no reason why you know, you're subbing stuff out halfway across the world to a dictator. To buy your stuff there. Seems like every one of my paint sessions involves the don't buy shit from China. Oh well. Once everybody under finally gets it, maybe I'll stop. Get off my soapbox, but Boston brown, cheap paint for ground color, but it's very kind of chalky. It is. It's very. It's very chalky, but it's good for this. Um, I know several people that do all their painting with this stuff. I I don't know about that because it doesn't cover worth a damn, but it, it works great for terrain and any of that stuff. And it's locally available, so I could go to the store and you know and get more if I need to. All right, I don't really want to make a mess, but I don't have much of a choice. I think I'm going to go ahead and just dump this out here. And let's see what kind of a dry brush we want to do. Um, light on this we don't want to overkill let's see what we're dealing with here we do need to cover up most of this let's do one of these walls and see how it looks Iraqi sand for the win. Well, if that's really the Iraqi color, yeah. Yeah, the final color will be something like Iraqi sand for sure. Yeah, this original thing is older than snot. I mean, it's... I mean, this is like built like... I think this thing's older than the pyramids.
Well, hope this turns out okay. It's not for me, but I get to see it all the time. I have a hard time painting something and then... Now see, I would be discouraged if I had been doing this a while ago. And I go, man, that just doesn't turn out very well. But I know that it's going to have other coats and it'll end up balancing itself out. But this is one of those things that if... 20 years ago, if I would have done this, I'd been, I would just like stop. Like, this isn't going to turn out. I'd go do something else, but you just got to stick with it. It'll, um, it'll even itself out because there's going to be at least two more colors on top of it. You can't have a whole lot of, of this black showing through because the whole thing would look really dark. So, I'm look. I'm end up end up looking for, see how it is over here, covered like this section here. That's what I'm I'm looking to aim for the whole thing being, looking kind of like this consistency, and then we can bring it up. You know, there's a little bit of black showing, but not a ton. Um, that's at least what I'm looking at doing. So, I don't know if using the square blade, the square brush helps any at all, but. I think it's very difficult to find a use for these square brushes. And I figure if I can't use it for this, I don't know what the hell I'm going to use it for. Because they don't give you as good a control as a standard brush. So we're going to try to do the whole one edge, one side here of this that we can see. And then turn it sideways. And then go from there. So when I go over it, the area that I've already had it, let's see if I can show you. So this has just like almost one coat and here it has a second one. So it's gonna have more of a sandstone look. I think it'll turn out just fine. Um, Cause some of the black is gonna get covered over and that's fine. The black is just mainly there to, if there's some kind of a crevice that you kind of miss, then it'll end up being that color. Don't get discouraged about how you think it's going to start to look. I'm going to try to paint up and down so that if there's any kind of streaking or whatever, it kind of works with it. But this is extremely mindless. Okay. We got these steps to get over here. Oh, too thick. No biggie. And no, I don't paint for people. Even though I'm painting for somebody, I don't paint for people, so. Joe actually said, hey, I got this thing. I want you to paint it for me. I'm like, okay, sounds fine.
When people pay you to do something, then they get to decide what the timeline is. If I do it for free, then I get to decide. And I don't care about the money. I just don't want to be rushed. But it's got to be something that I'm going to find interesting. And we'll do all the walkways uh, later, but... I think that, that I think this is what makes sense the most is just look at it from one side, try to get everything you can, and then turn it. All right, let's show you guys a side view so you can kind of see what I'm seeing. And keep in mind what you're seeing in this camera may not exactly be the correct color representation. I've seen that happen before. Here you go. So from this to this. That's why I see you got some spots here that don't have complete coverage. You won't be able to tell by the time you're done with this. And this is just one color. We're going to have, you know, at least two more colors on top of this to bring out the details and stuff like that. So, all right, coffee, coffee break. Mm. I'm with you being a careful consumer. If the producer or vendor doesn't fit my, shall we say, criteria, I don't spend my money with them. You know, yeah, I agree. People should be able to do whatever the heck they want with money. Um, it is their life. And what are you saying? I said, well, you know, you get paid to do a job. Your time that you're left on this earth is being consumed by whatever job that is you do and you get compensated. So technically, you're being paid for your life. So you can do whatever you want with your life. I think. At least you used to be able to. Um, but I'd rather not spend my money on uh, with people that are out to get us. So, And it's not the people who live in that country because it's the same situation that... Uh, many other countries face they're kind of in a they're in a tough spot too but the folks in charge don't need to be uh getting any richer or have more control over our lives but if you choose to spend your your money there you feel free to but other than that give them any more power Especially since uh, they're kind of been saying it for a long time. They're behind this whole thing. I think anyways, I'm pretty convinced. So. We'll see if history shows that to be true or not. Support people that support your value system, whatever that may be. Alright. Now that we kind of knew how far we could push it on the other side. I'm a little bit more um, willing to kind of, I don't want to say slop this on because that's kind of a bit unfair because you can't, you can't just do that. You, you do want to have some kind of precision, but at least know how far you can push this. I got lots of people that live in that country that we're talking about that I communicate with and I... They've been mom. I don't blame them. They got a gun pointed at their head. I get it. I understand how that is, but. My, my dad left an oppressed country with 
everything he had on himself. And um, I'm glad he did. Thanks, Dad. Because uh, I'm fortunate to not be having to be born there. But those people living in those places now, I mean, you, I don't expect them to stand up. You know, you got to survive. So hopefully that better times are ahead for them in their future. I don't know, was the UK going to give those folks citizenship if they wanted? I, forgot. I don't really watch the news, so, you know. I know several people that are in this hobby from the ex-crown colony and um, war gave me pretty big there, so. About time for me to do another Asian army. Man, I love my Asian armies. They're awesome. Cool history. Really cool history that's not known about or forgotten about or ignored in the West. Battles of massive sizes and nobody in the West really pays attention to them. Okay, let's see. Did we get everything from this angle? Okay, and then we got the opposite side here. Let's do the let's do this one and the other one. Dirk, good morning. Happy birthday for last week. Thank you, Dirk. Doesn't feel like it was my birthday. I don't know what it's supposed to feel like. But I know last year, I swore I wasn't going to work on my birthday again. Um, I didn't. So, uh, this year it lands, my birthday landed on a Friday. Next year it lands on a Saturday. Following year it lands on a Sunday. So, I'm pretty sure the next three years I'm not going to work on my birthday. But, you know, it was annoying the previous year. Like, oh, happy birthday. How's your day going? I said, it sucks. I'm at work. So, I was like, well, we're going to make sure we don't do that. Especially since it's a, it's a big one this year. So, they tell me. I keep saying that because I don't feel like the age I supposedly am. But then I know lots of people that are my age are just in seem really old. Not me. I play with toys and it keeps me young. Hey, there's some truth to that. Uh we disappear in our, to our semi-fantasy world and kind of forget about our worries of real life. I've said this before, this, is, this hobby is therapy. And it's cheap therapy. So... Keeps me young, I don't know. I don't feel like I'm old, any older than 25, honestly. <laughs> Five years ago, my vision kind of took a turn. I couldn't see things up close, but dealt with that pretty well. I think actually in uh, just learn how to paint without my contacts in. And I got better hobby vision than I did before. So... As long as I don't get the shakes, that'll be good. I don't have a history of that in my family. And I know somebody I used to work with that they were older. They had the shakes really bad, but they were an alcoholic. I, I'm, I'm not. I don't, I don't think that's ever going to be me. I, I enjoy talking about drinking, certainly more than drinking, but 
even on Saturday on my birthday, we went bar hopping in the Disney area. And we, I only had like, a, I think over the course of like six hours, like five beers or something like that. Maybe it was even seven hours. So, you know, that's not in, that's not in my psyche to be a, a drinker. Um, as I've said before, I can get away with not drinking at work. I can certainly not drink when I'm not at work. So. I think somewhere I read that you shouldn't have more than one drink a day or something like that for males. I'm like, yeah, I average less than that. I mean, well, when I have a drink, it's more than one, but I'll go like two weeks and not drink. History of China is a new topic for the West. Only publicized in the last 40 years, we're still discovering new ideas about the Middle East. Yeah, um, both of those areas, the biggest problem is, is the script. You know, if it was something like, say, the Turks, who uh, were intelligent enough to adopt our alphabet, People can write in their native language, but you got to keep, you got to go with the freaking alphabet that most of the world uses so that we can share that information with each other. It's not about everybody speaking English, but, you know, I don't speak German, but if I could figure things out if I needed to, just because it's the same letters and you could just play the recognized game. You can't do that with the Chinese characters or Japanese characters or Russian or the Arabic characters, you know, you gotta, let's get, let's get out of the stone age and use the normal, uh, use the normal alphabet folks. Yeah. That's just, that's the biggest problem. It, it's super interesting. I love the history of the Middle East and the, and the Far East and that kind of stuff. Far East. I wonder if did they consider us the Far West. Ah, uh, it's fascinating. Greek, man, I mean, the Greek, Greek characters look really cool, but I don't know what the hell they're saying, you know? <laughs> A lot of stuff looks really neat, but man, I can't, under I can't understand you. See how we did on this side. Now that I'm almost done with this, it's looking better than I thought it was going to. You just got to stick with it. And this is just one coat. I don't think I'm going to be doing a wash on it. There's enough. I don't need more black showing through than that. It, it would actually be detrimental if I did that. Okay, let's do the other front now. That's going to turn out really well. That's usually what happens when I paint something for other people. It turns out better than if I was doing it for myself. Mike B, happy Father's Day. Thank you. Happy Father's Day to you too, if if you're one of those. If you are a father. If you're a person that does fatherage stuff. Yeah, I won't be going fishing today. I'm not one of those people. I'm not a fisherman. Certainly not freshwater. Look, I'm a saltwater person. I find fresh water is not very fresh, at least in this state. I know that places that are like maybe a place like Switzerland or something like that, where you've got the 
you got all that good water that comes down from the mountains and melting snow and all that is nice. But here, our water comes from a freaking swamp. You don't want to get in it. I mean, yeah, we got springs, but man, they're cold. That's too cold. I'm a salt water person. But fishing is enjoyable. I had so many people say, hey, let's go hunting. No interest in going hunting. No interest. And I'm not a save the animals activist. I, well, I don't want to kill animals, but, you know, they're yummy to eat. Um, sometimes, depending on the animal, but. Nah, I don't want to hunt animals for. They got animals in the store already, man. I don't need to do that. I'm not going to kill a beautiful creature just because it's there. You hunt the wrong things, man. Let's How about let's hunt child molesters? Can we do that? When's, when's child molester hunting season start? Why do I got to kill a beautiful deer? And don't tell me you guys wouldn't do that. Like I've said before, if gladiatorial combat was on TV, nobody would be watching football or rugby or none of that stupid shit. Cricket. Nah, you'd be watching the guy, you know, with a trident go after the guy with a freaking spear. And you know it. Especially if you knew they were like criminals or something like that. Yeah, you'd watch that. Let's see how we did on this one. Now yeah, we need to do some more on here. Tony's painting appealing to your more base instincts. Yeah. People playing with a ball. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Once we get this thing down, we will go and do the walkways from above. We're going to avoid this front area. We have a different color treatment to do for it. I don't want to use exactly the same color. It's just all going to be look like it just got spray painted. He built a camp for my 15 millimeter Scots Irish and decided to model a dolmen, stone tomb, like Pool Nabron. Realized the stones would have been 2,000 years old at the time of. Oh boy. All right. If you know how to pronounce that name, tell me how I do. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do my best. Let's see. Cool. Kulan, Kukulan, Kukulain, Kukulain, circa 300 AD. Yeah, stones are old. That's one of those names, though, that has multiple spellings, isn't it? Oh, Kukulain, Kukulain. The way you spelled it looks like it'd be Kukulain, Kukulain. Hey, I want to get the pronunciation right. I just don't have any. Uh, I have no history of being able to pronounce that kind of those types of names. That's not my responsibility. That's not my people. <laughs> now, I want to pronounce things right. So spell that out phonetically so I can get it right. Just like uh, what's that uh, ornery woman that the Romans had to deal with? Boudicca. Is it Boudicca, Bodicea? I want to spell I want to say those things correctly, or as correct as it's known. C 
Ku. Okay, Ku. I'm, I'm, I assume it's Ku. 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 All right, I gotta get closer so I can see. Ku. Kalein. Kukalein. Kukalein. That guy's crazy. What's wrong with these? Kukalein. Uh, is he the guy that I have a picture in one of my books? Let's see. Good old um, Angus McBride. Died way too soon. Loved his artwork. Let's see. Is he on, I believe he's under my Celtic Warrior books by Tim Newark. I picked this up used. I believe he is. I believe this is. There's a picture of him running with a dog. Uh, all right, let's see. We got phonetic spelling. Kukulan. 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 Ku hound of Kulan. He was a smith. Cool. There's a picture of him in here with his hound, I believe. A painting. I believe this is the book that has it. There he is. It's spelled a little bit different, has two ends in it. Nice. Kukulan of Ulster rides his legendary side chariot against conic raiders, described in the pre Christian Irish saga Tainbo. Kulain. Oh boy. Oh, he has a side chariot. Oh, he's got even he's even has pointy things down here. Ooh. Cool stuff. Scott's Irish. I've uh one of the guys has one of those. Um I think Luke has it. I've played that army and I've kicked ass with it big time. So I do well with anything Irish when I'm at the helm, whatever that means. Closet Irishman. Pretty sure my only tie in with the Irish is, as I like to say, 1588, my ancestors didn't know about the Gulf Stream and crash landed on the North Coast and kept everybody in Ireland from being red haired and freckled. You're welcome. <laughs> Not that I have a problem with redheads. At all. As a boy, the fellow killed a huge dog, so he became the guard of the household. Hence the name he was the hound's replacement. That's cool. Was it an Irish wolfhound? It wasn't Odago, was it? Don't mess with Odago, man. It kicks ass for me. I can't wait to do my my um, my pre fetal Scots so I could have the same kind of a relationship with them as well. Although you know what, I'm not going to jump out. One of those things that I talked about the first army that I won a tournament with was my um, Koreans, and I kept talking about man, and now I need to have a celebratory Korean meal, and I never got around to doing that. It was like in 2006. I don't think I've ever been to a Korean place. I haven't avoided it just really didn't even have a chance but uh it's not like there's that many of them um but um had the irish food many times i don't know about the scottish food we need to wait for civilization to catch up with that food Whew. a friend of mine used to say who was i think he's part scottish um he used to say that scottish food was was created on a dare. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of that. If I want Scottish food, I'll have McDonald's. <laughs> I know it won't kill me.
Now I'm going to plan on doing this walkway is going to be lighter colored than the walls because of sun bleaching. You know, it's always going to be. So we may take this walkway one level higher than we would with the walls, but we'll see that is going to be a slow progression. What is it? 715? Nah, well, we should be able to make it. I may not be able to get this little front area done yet, but the colors of the wall, because when you dry brush, every level that you do up from the first one takes less and less time. So that's at least been my experience with that. All right. ourselves some more coffee here so you know we're gonna go ahead and do that be right back So speaking to the Scots, I was doing some web surfing and when I was deciding what time period of pre-feudal Scots I was going to focus on, I probably am going to do during the period of a king called Duncan, I don't remember what his name is, Canmore? I want to believe it's Duncan Canmore. And I was surfing around, and um, they make a scotch that's called Duncan Canmore. And I don't know if it's any good, but I thought that was hilarious. But it's not available in the States, so that would be pretty freaking cool to drink something that's named after the guy's army that I'm doing. That That's the kind of stuff I get into. So, But that's not available in the States. So it might be just rubbish anyways, so... Who knows? Um, how bad could it be, right? So when I was, uh, if you guys have watched the video of the unboxing that I did about the, um, these guys right here, Lamorites, that's right, I just got these guys here. I couldn't get the army back from Essex because the shipping that Essex has done now to the States has been, I think their minimum would have been like 15 pounds. And who knows how long it would have taken. It might have been more than 15 pounds. So something happened. I don't know what the hell happened between shipping in the United States and England. And the UK. Sorry. I don't want to. I don't know if I do that a lot. I don't know if I say England and I, I don't mean. Um, I, I don't. Honestly, I don't use Great Britain. I sometimes say England when I mean the whole thing. Obviously, I know what the difference is. But um, Great Britain is one of those I don't use. I don't use that terminology. I usually say England or or United Kingdom, the UK is what I like to call it. But anyways, the shipping between the UK and um, and the United States is just ridiculous. Uh, and it maybe should have always been that way, but it seems like since the whole Brexit thing, um, it's almost like they figured out there was an untapped revenue source. So 
they wanted to get in on that. I don't know on what side, or the other way around, or sorry, the UK. There, there I did it again. Uh, I should say it because do I have do I get anything from Ireland? I don't know that I get anything from Ireland, but uh, a couple of manufacturers are in Scotland. So Zeistons is up there, and I think Alternative Armies is up there too. Yeah, so that's cool. But for whatever reason, the shipping has just gone unreasonable. Maybe it was too cheap before, because literally the shipping cost really similar to what it was between us here in the U.S. And then all of a sudden it just got stupid. There was only one place in the United Kingdom that the shipping was stupid. Uh, that That's always been since I've ordered with them, and that was Donington. Donington, the shipping was just absurd. Uh, it didn't keep me from ordering from, from them, but um, everywhere else was very comparable to the United inter-United States shipping. But about a year ago, it just got stupid. So... And that makes no sense because the United Kingdom was part of the European Union and everywhere else in Europe was extremely expensive for us to get shipping from, except the UK. And now that they're independent, why would it be more? I don't know. I think it was like, oh, we should have been charging this surtax the whole time. Oh, well, we need to start doing that now. So, oh well. Good thing I have about everything I need now, right? Before that went up. All the more reason to don't buy things you don't need. Museum charged me 15 quid inland. That seems a lot. Maybe it's the Postal Service. Yeah, I don't know what happened. That's a shame because, you know, England, that's where all the... Here I go again. The United Kingdom is where all the toys come from, with the exception of a couple of manufacturers um, and, and the stuff that I do. Duncan Canmore's camp would be a wooden hill what? There are remains of his camp on a hill in Burnham Wood and taste wooden, wooded, oh, oh, a wooded hill. Okay, maybe we can do that with his flag or something like that. Rather than Brexit, I think it was a reciprocal move when USPS put the international rates up. Well, I'm a proud member of this country. I'm never going to take the side of USPS. They suck. I call them the United States Postal Disservice. They're profound liars. They'll tell you something's coming on one day and it doesn't arrive until two days later. And I'll get my blood pressure up just talking about those sons of bitches. Meanwhile, Amazon delivers a day earlier than they say they're going to. And UPS leaves things at your door and the Postal Service just sucks. Well, you know why? Monopoly. Monopolies suck, folks. I don't care what it is. Competition keeps us all honest. So. Yeah, I won't take the side of the Postal Service. And they drive around the neighborhood like a maniac and got bad attitudes. Should I continue? <laughs> I'm sure your postal service in the Royal Mail is better. Guaranteed. You guys have better looking stamps.
Okay, I think we're just about done with this color. Let's go around this. See if I've missed any glaring spots. It's not like I couldn't go back. And it's going to get some other coats. So some areas here, like say the edge of this of this wall, if if they're if they see maybe a little bit of black, then the next color up can catch them. If not, we'll we'll go to Plan B. I got a spot here I'd like to work on. Let's let's add a little bit here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And B. Is it raining? Well, no mowing on Father's Day. Damn it. That sucks. I was, it wasn't that I was looking forward to mowing the lawn. It's just a lot easier to do it on the weekend then try to work it in during the week. Shipping charges to and from the US, UK have been increasing since 2019. USPS were made to increase charges to make imports less attractive. US, UK postage has always been high. Yeah. Well, I'm fine with making imports less attractive, but not from the UK. How about from, here's an idea, freaking China, okay? <sighs> when, are, when are all us free countries gonna unite? There absolutely should be better, more stuff being made in Australia, New Zealand. You know, all the Commonwealth places, uh, England, France, Germany, Italy, you know. And even places like India, I'm fine with that. Huh. And there's places like Yemen, they don't make jack, so you don't have to worry about buying things from, oh man, those Yemenis are taking over. No. Oh. Let's, let's buy things from people that share our same value system or a similar value system it doesn't have to be the same all right channel i'm sure is banned in china oh well let's get this next one up speaking of china i wish somebody made a little walled city like this I've, I've got plans. I started working on one, but it's it's a it's a lot to do. It's a lot to do. <clears throat> All right. Uh oh, it's kind of watery. This is really watery. Why is this one? I mean, it is a different brand. All right, let's. Yeah, I wouldn't have any. I wouldn't have any import fees on stuff from the from the UK or New Zealand or Australia. Or... You guys are like our biggest buddies, and hopefully, we are too. Nothing wrong with that. This may be too watery to use. We're going to have to test this on a small portion over here. Well, I think we can use it. We got this guy to be really sparingly with this.
We're just going to go around it the same way we did here. Make sure we get all the, the sides as a little bit of depth of color. Now, there is pictures I've seen where this top little temple part, I, I'm going to assume it's a temple, and this little, the little dome here in light blue, I may do that, but that'll be the very end. I, I think I am going to do that because I think it could look really cool, and I think I have a cool way of doing it. So, and and if I don't like how it turns out, um, I can always repaint it. It's very, this is very forgiving. So. Okay, so you have this with just one color, and then it's not, it's not it's more noticeable in person than it is on the video. The video doesn't do everything correctly, so. I do get, I got to remember, I got to try something out today. My wife gave me for my birthday, she gave me a little light box, an expensive little collapsible little light box. To, she heard me bitching about not taking pictures, good pictures. And and I'll admit, I'm, I've been really frustrated as of late that I can't, I'll take pictures of the stuff I've done and it just doesn't look like it, it should. And it's frustrating. So maybe we can improve that a little bit. I said, okay, well, if it doesn't work well, can we return it? She's like, yep, yeah, okay, fair enough. I don't, no reason to have something here that nobody uses, you know? We'll see, we'll then try that. I'm going to try that today, maybe get some good pictures of my Russians. Uh, and a lot of it may, may be this light here. It's just so powerful. And I'm not griping about this light, but it's it's kind of overkill. It's kind of like using a sledgehammer, maybe they kill a roach. Too powerful for what it's supposed to do, and it just blinds. I've watched a couple of videos on it. I just can't seem to get any better at taking these close-up things. You know, we're taking pictures of things that are very, very, very small. So. The human eye is so much more powerful than any camera to capture all those little intricacies that it's frustrating when you take pictures of something and it just doesn't live up to the expectations or even close. This color, I think I'm going to skip on the walkway. I think we're going to walkway. I want to have a little lighter color anyway. So color was this that was this one here's the super light color <laughs> lots of people online happy father's day to you guys if you're a father if you're not go be one <laughs> hey only if you're gonna stick around we don't need any more of those we don't need any more kids without parents to pay to take care of them we got enough of that in the world. I said parents, I covered myself, right? It could be two mothers or whatever, just don't let the government raise your kids, man.
This one's watery too. Maybe it's an apple barrel thing. Which is the first one I used? Americana. Aren't they, are they made say by the same people? This is oh, this is the Kentucky one. So the Kentucky one's th thicker. <laughs> All right. I don't know that it needs to be that much lighter than this anyways, but we're going to add some other depth here. Ever so subtle. trying to kind of do it from this angle so that I don't have one side that for some reason gets forgotten. We don't want to do that. We don't make that easy to make mistake. Turn the sides. So we're going to try painting these areas that would normally be, it's like a light blue that I've seen in a picture, but we're going to do it with a glaze. Um, besides, I'm always looking for reasons to use my glaze medium anyways, so I'm going to try that. And that way it won't be like bright blue. You'll still see that some of that sandstone come through. This is what I'm thinking, just thinking out loud here. And uh, if I do have to repaint it, it won't be that big a deal, but I don't want it to be super bright blue because I don't want it to look like, it. still want it to look like it's brick. So that's my thoughts anyways, initially. Sometimes you have to modify the plans that you have because things happen unexpectedly but i'm specifically trying to do this the areas towards the top of this ziggurat to be or towards the part of each section to actually be uh, lighter colored than the bottom part it helps it pop out a little bit more i know i'm probably spending too much time on this but honestly i i enjoy i enjoy this process um quite a bit now now i'm doing the fun part you know the part i consider fun i guess this is drying out and more of this stuff would have never thought I'm not sure that we're going to get to any white. I may do it just the tiniest of bit, but we'll see. Yeah, so you're, don't use a good brush or dry brushing. You're just going to trash it. 
This is these uh, old brushes that I have from there. I'm not going to be buying any more of those. That was before the pandemic. So I had half a mind to break all these brushes and just throw them away, but I don't need to waste stuff, money I've already spent on them. You just won't buy any more. Now everything I buy, I try to look at and see where it comes from. So. It's not like I'm going through that many brushes. I can afford to spend a little bit more than I used to on the brushes if I need to, but I got enough for a while. I kind of overbought there at the end, so. Okay, look, I hope this comes into the camera, but hopefully you can see this subtle. Let me describe it and then show it to you. Um, it's more of the sandy color and towards the bottom. And as you come up, there's less of it on there. Let's see if this will, I think some of it is prevalent. It looks better in, in real life. It's a little bit more subtle, but you can see it's more brown towards the bottom. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with how that looks. Really happy. So the other thing that makes me really happy is I've painted only a handful of things for other people. I think Luke's got an artillery piece. Mitch has a few things. And what I've noticed is the best thing you can do when I paint something for you is just take care of it. And, um, and they do, they're very proud of using it. And, um, and I always joke when Luke, when Luke plays with his artillery piece, I said, man, make sure, even if I'm fighting it, make sure it gets a lot of kills, you know, because it's still my thing, even though you own it. Uh, it's part of your army. It's still my artillery piece. So I want it to do well. So it makes me happy when they do well. People take care of, appreciate the things that he spent some time on because I want them to enjoy it too. I don't want to have to repaint it for you. I'd rather paint something new, not something that you already had that you just didn't take care of. And had you had, you, uh, but that's, that's the nicest thing you can do. So. This is fun though. What I'm, what I'm doing right now It's therapeutic and it's easy. Take some time, but mindless I think I'm gonna do a layer that has some white I'm gonna make some white in with this I'm thinking very little we're gonna do the um we're going to do the glaze before we get to that, though. That's going to be the next one we're going to do. We can find out whether or not it's a, it was the right move or not. I have no idea. But Okay. Yeah, you can really see the differentiation there. more bleach because it's closer to the sun <laughs> yes 50 feet makes a difference 
I think the height of this thing was like 97 feet or something like that. I'm sure that's the very top here. When you're millions of miles away from the sun, an extra 50 feet will make a difference <laughs> for bleaching. I was considering several years ago getting an airbrush and it's just, you know, I just don't want to, I don't mind spending the time to do this. I don't want to spend the time cleaning an airbrush and making a mess, honestly. Um, and I don't know that it's that useful for me by the time you really get down to it to really use one. I don't want to, I feel like the time I spend cleaning it is, would be to, is totally wasted. And I got to do it in the garage and the garage is hot and I've used one before. And I just I've talked myself out of, out of doing that. All right, let's see. How are we looking? Not bad, huh? And then we're going to have, uh, we're going to do the final thing will be to do the highlighting here on the edge of, of the corners here and make that pop a little bit more. But um, all right, coffee break. And we're going to do the glaze. Now, um, here's a picture here. It's a light blue. We don't want to do it too bright. And it kind of looks, I've looked at pictures of it, artist renditions, and it looked kind of out of place being light blue, but it keeps the whole damn thing from being all like one sandstone thing. And, um, but that's why we're going to do a glaze. We're going to go light, build it up, and it um, should be fine. All right, so let's, let's get the glaze in here. All right, let's pick our light blue candidate here. No. Uh, like I said, we're going to go subtle. Maybe that one. Uh, this might even be better. Let's try that. You can always darken it. So a glaze, unlike how I normally paint, is really weird. It's really weird for somebody having to kind of think outside the box for a way that they've done that for so many years. And what it is, is you've got to paint what's lighter first and then what's darker, which is the opposite of how I paint. So I have to remember that, that it's almost like I'm relearning how to do things. So let's get our glaze medium. I believe it's this.
glazed medium. And this is just a, a fancy, fancy way of saying, I'm gonna take this paint and I'm gonna take the thinner that's already in here and I'm gonna thin it down more. It's not exactly like thinning it down, but um, there's some similarities to it. We don't want to do a blue that's too dark and then realize, oh shit, I mean, should have done a lighter one because it's gonna to be too late. These are the these are the little paint cups that actually come with the that are part of the um, um, you know what I'm talking about the my um, wet palette. If I can learn how to speak here, and there's a proportion that says that you shouldn't have more than fifty percent of this to the other one, but I just ignore that stuff. I've messed with it a little bit and. I'm pretty comfortable with it. Let's not use a brush that's horrible, but not one that's not too bad. So here. So this is basically what we're going to do is we're going to create almost kind of like a wash. I don't have to use a lot of liquid. This is already wasting more than what I need. So we're just going to do this little dome here. You could look at this and say, no, I wish I'd done a little thicker. Well, that's why I have this over here. And it may actually not be that noticeable. It may not be that blue, so I may have to build it up. But you want to. not go too far and then have to try to take it out. Yeah, see, I can see this, that this isn't, this isn't going to get where I need to go. It's just, it's too subtle. You can barely see it. So even if I went with a thicker one, the color is too subtle. All right, fair enough. This is, I'm in the infancy of using this particular uh, method, so. That's got too much turquoise in it. This one may not be bad. Although this one may be really blue. It may be very gray. Yeah. It's a little brighter now. We only have a million blues to choose from. All right, let's try this. Uncharted territory. Okay, now let's um, This is a better color, I think.
but it's still going to look sandy. But it's going to be, and it's just a little top section here and the top little dome. I think the coloration is, the color blue is probably right that we got there. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to go around and do the rest of this. The Yahoo Glaze Medium. I didn't want to just paint this whole thing like bright blue. I want it to be something that, yeah, it was blue, but man, it's getting bleached and sun sandblasted, etc. It's almost kind of like I'm making a thick wash because it really doesn't move a whole lot. Um, it kind of stays wherever you put it for the most part. I mean, obviously, if you use too much of this, that's not the case, but I want to leave the, the little rim at the top of this. I want to leave that in a natural color. And these door openings and stuff, they will have a known oil treatment to them to darken them up a little bit more. Show you guys what we got here. Take a look at the top of that temple. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing here with the top of this dome. You know, and if I don't like that, I'd say maybe I want it brighter, just do the same thing, but just go over it again. But if you go, if you go too far, then you got a problem on your hands. You have to use some kind of a enamel color that you then have to try to thin down while it's on it. And I would rather not use enamel paint. Okay. And look at this and say, you know what? I'll, maybe I want a little bit more color in here. All right. Yeah, I think this is good. I'm going to drop this more, the thicker color, color in the, in the darker recesses.
least. At least I'm happy with the results. Because that's what I was going to do anyways. I was going to come in and I was going to dry brush those, the details so it would stand out more. It kind of does the same thing, but in reverse. Scott Gregory, good morning. Happy Father's Day. You too, if applicable. <laughs> Just doing a little bit of book one painting here. Some people like to call this biblical army. This is pre-biblical. These guys, this is old school. This is like Gilgamesh ish. And I'll take, I'm going to use a little boy's room. I'll be right back. Take a look at how far this, what this looks like so far. I'm pretty darn happy with that. I'm not going to make it any brighter blue. I, I think that that's spot on where it needs to be. We're going to do a little bit of dry brushing. We're going to add some white to this lightest color. We're going to go around the edges of this, bring it up nicely, and then we'll do the train around the front of it. I think we should be good. Really, it looks even better at a distance, just standing up. It looks really happy, really happy with that. Excellent. Okay. Let's see if I can find my little piece of cardboard. I don't think I'm going to be able to find it. I have a little piece of cardboard where I like to scribble out what colors I used for the basing. And I've got it around here somewhere, but I want to, that's what I want to use for this desert type color here on the front. So. Uh, we may have to hold off on that until I find that, because that that will contrast nicely with what's what's already there. Okay, so let's uh, let's take this lightest color and add a little bit of white to it, just a tiny little bit. Bring this up, and we're gonna we're gonna do a no no. We're gonna use the good white with this El Cheapo paint. No, no. Oh, well, be nice if I mixed it, wouldn't it? All right, 
Now, let's grab a brush that we care a little bit more about. This is probably good right here. Probably should have done this on the wet palette, but I don't want to bring that out just for that. Be nice if I'd centered this on here. itchy there for some reason. I get bit by a bug over the weekend. I don't know. I don't know. I'm asking. <laughs> Where's my... Uh... Here we go. Mm -hmm. Like I said, if this is something that interests you, yeah, I did an unboxing video for here on my channel. There should be a, um, a unboxing video uh, for Joe's stuff that I did a couple weeks ago. And at the end, uh, I put on here what the name of the... He's there with me and he knows what the name of the vendor is. I don't, I don't remember who it is, but he did get it from Etsy and um, you could get your own cigarette if that's something you're interested in. Probably should send the guy who makes a cigarette a picture of this thing when we're done. 
put it on his page. I know several people said, man, you need to get into 3D printing. I'm like, dude, I'm a painter. I got lots of stuff to paint already. I don't need to, I don't need to do another hobby that takes forever to do. I don't have the personality type to, to do 3D printing. Uh, you give it to me, uh, or I go buy it, I can paint it, but I'm not interested in, in doing that kind of stuff. I did CAD in college, so I'm, I got the mentality for that. I just don't like the, it's not the actual CAD part, it's the other part of it that go to get it ready and you come home from work and expect them to be able to paint something or mess with something that you did and it all came out wrong or things weren't configured to right size. And I think all those 3D printers all come from that place I can't buy things from anyway. So I won't be doing any 3D printing. Again, you would think that stuff would come from like, say, a precision place like Germany or something like that. But they probably do make them there, but they're a lot more. Hmm. Something elastic on here. I don't know if I need to do anything else to this. And again, it's look, looking more washed out in your picture than it is for mine, but... Oh, I do need to do more. We need to do that null and all stuff that we're talking about. This, this thing always worried about it. Breaking open, spilling all over the place. You know, if you've never done something like this before, there's no secret. You just have to just jump in and just kind of start taking a whack at it and build it up. It's a slow build up. Yeah, let me get um, let me get one of my stands and my Ptolemaics, and I'll show you what color I want to use here on the outside.
they're not where I thought they were, which means I've used them relatively recent. And they're in one of these boxes. But the army that I have, it has kind of a desert type base. They're going to be in the last one I check, aren't they? That's the color I want to use for the basing. See, it's different enough than this color that it is. I believe it's English uniform is the base color. You know what? I'm sure that's what it is. So here's what I'm going to do. I don't remember. I had a little piece of paper where I wrote down a little piece of cardboard that I like the stuff in here where my, and I don't know where it is right now. And I don't want to tear my entire area apart. I'd like to get this thing done for Joe and I want to get it done correctly. So I'm going to go to the Flames of War site, which is where I got this idea anyways. And on their paint guides, Oh boy, we're using my my internet, which is extremely slow. Uh, I believe it's under the hobby heading modeling. Come on. And it was an article called something along the lines of desert basing. And what was cool is they showed um, kind of little terrain swaths of what it would look like. Oh, here's a search function. Desert basing. Uh, and it showed what three colors they used for the dry brush. And it showed a finished example of it. So you didn't have to try to do it from scratch because... You may end up like getting the right base color, but then you highlight it in colors that aren't going to give you the, the result that you wanted. Well, that's not working. It's really slow. My home internet is embarrassingly bad. Desert basing kit, maybe? Let's see. It was a while ago since I had this. Desert, oh, here it is. Desert basing. It's like the fifth one down. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so one of these was this was this one. Fifty fifty mix of battlefield brown. That wasn't it. Let's go all the way to the here we go. There it is. So, if you look on it, you guys are interested in seeing what I'm looking at here. Gives you little examples down here of like colors that they use to mix it all up. So, like this brown sand one, this is actually a color I use for like my African bases uh, or like my Indians. This is the English uniform. English uniform, green ochre, dark sand. Perfect. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're going to do. And this is what it'll end up looking like. So it'll look different than this sandstone on here. Okay. So English uniform, which I believe is a color that's drying out on me. I don't have a whole lot of it left. So let's pray for rain. Might be a little difficult to find since it's over here in the area where I don't have a lot of lighting in. I know about what kind of color it is. That little, there's lots of great stuff there on, um, on the 
Flames of War site. I don't do any flaming, but they have good resources. uniform. That's all I had to do is give myself some light. Green ochre, which is a very similar color to Panzer Dark Yellow. Um, so, man, there's a lot of heat coming off this lamp. I thought this was, uh, didn't use a lot. Here it is. Green, green ochre. Okay. And what was the last color? Uh, dark sand. That one's harder to find. Uh, let's try this one. First try, bam. Process of elimination. So these are the three colors that make that swath thing. Let's go back to the... Okay. Yeah, so this is the same type of color. These are my little ruins that I made for my Ptolemaic army way back when. Still need to make this army 3.0 compatible. We're going to go ahead and let's take this down from the ground. We don't want to rip all over that. This is, this is what we're trying to achieve here. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and put this up on this pedestal so we can get around it. All right. First color, English uniform. So everything gets English uniform. <laughs> and we're actually gonna use, ah, we don't, I don't think we need to use the wet palette for this. The wet palette takes up so much space that. I may, I may have to use it anyways, but. Get one of these needles in here. Because I got the tip of this stopped up. There we go. Problem with using the wet palette is I got paint here. It's gonna get in on the bottom of this. All right, let's see if we can get away with not making too big a mess. All right, let's get some English uniform in here. of this so want to be a little kind of not messy now you're looking at this now and you're like man this looks too bright for the bottom color it does that's why I use those paint guides because I would have never used a color this dark this uh, light but it is on top of black so it's gonna be a little bit It's going to be end up being a little bit darker than this, but and this did have a pattern on it, um, like a cross hatch. So I added a little bit of that uh, of that sand paste. Then the one that's called natural sand. It's a little thinner than than the one I normally use. Just to break up the the shape of of this, so it doesn't look like cross hatchy, cross hatchish. Yeah, using the wet palette for this was the right idea. I don't want this uh, paint to dry out while I'm doing this. And we're not using any mixing. We're just going to use three different colors. I'm going to layer them on top of another and just do dry brushing. Well, this one's not dry brushing, but the other two will be.
So what we're going to do is um, we're going to, when we're finished with this, we will go ahead and give this a, a sealer on it. And um, we'll use my light box. And this will be the thing, first thing I take pictures of using the light box. Hopefully that works for me because um, you guys need to see more of what I see. And, uh, you know, I don't feel like I'm an idiot when it comes to taking pictures. I've watched a couple of videos and I just can't seem to get it. Um, I'll find some subject and paint, take about 12 pictures and end up posting the best of the 12. But um, I'm having issues with, as you get far away from the subject, from the center, it starts getting too blurry. And uh, I'm not taking something that's particularly big, but I need to have at least um, six or seven, six or seven inches uh, where it stays in focus. And I'm not getting that. And I'm tinkering with the settings, and it's just frustrating. So we'll see if uh, I have a feeling it's just this light is too powerful. Ur would be proud. Yeah. I think this is going to turn out great. I'm extremely optimistic at this point. So, I'm extremely optimistic. When you first start doing these things, you're like, man, this isn't going to turn out really well, man. It looks like the black's not covering well. And I think I will be pleasantly surprised when this thing's done. Let's send this guy a picture, this 3D printer guy, whatever his name is. I'll get him and... I think there's a way on to send to send them pictures. Uh, maybe you can sell more of them. But it did it did require some flash cleanup, which I wasn't too thrilled about. But you just kind of have to take it one section at a time. It's one thing you don't want to do after you're done with this. Realize, oh man, there's something I should have cleaned up with. I should have cleaned up the flash on this. A little too late. And my book one army will have this basing, even though it's a arable army. Uh, I'm going to have this type of basing. I may put some greenery on it to kind of tie them in, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to use this color. But it's a nice color. It it, it complements the figures well. So. Joe has some desert basing for his figures for the the er so that should fit in with this nicely all right the rest of these is just a tiny little sliver of this color showing Okay, there you have it. Okay. Now, next color up, green ochre.
overkill. If I did it on here, I think I would have used more paint and wouldn't have worked as well. This is the part that gives it that yellow look. Now, I gotta be careful I don't use too big a brush here because I may not be able to get into close. So let's see what we got here. That's so watery. I know yellowish colors normally are watery anyways to begin with. Yeah, I mentioned in the video, I'd like to have my Amorites done in 2021. It's a good goal for that. I think we can knock them out. I don't think it'll take that long to do them. It's going to be one of those challenges where I'm going to take an army that looks kind of boring and make them look interesting. Put some of this color here on the edge. We may have to water this down a little bit so we can get some of this coloration on here. What happens if some of this sprays up on the top? I think it's, I think we'll be all right. Might not even be a bad thing. I've had this color a long time. It's a half life on these paints. <laughs> And I hope the light box works for me. Now, that's the problem is, is, you know, you can't go to a store anymore and try things out. You got to like order it through Amazon and hope to God you, well, you can at least return it there, but it's kind of a pain. You know, I just want to get the right thing. I don't mind spending the money. I just want to get the right thing because not getting the right thing. It doesn't matter how cheap it was. You got the wrong thing. So. But you can't. When I got my computer, which I was in the market for just before the pandemic was hitting, I went ahead and jumped to Best Buy and got my computer because I did not want to order a computer sight unseen. It's just way too much money for that. That's way too big a risk. So, okay. So here's the color of that. We're going to come in with this uh, dark sand and finish it up. And then we should be able to call this guy done. We'll see what it looks like. We'll see what this guy looks like. It's the nice thing about dry brushing is you don't have to wait for the stuff to dry. Usually if you're using so little, 
it is aluminum. That looks really bright, but we need contrast. So this is a nice combination of colors. Thank you, Flames of War. I would have never known. You know, there's good resources everywhere. They show you the color combinations, how they look when you're done, so you're not halfway in it and then realize, oh man, I really don't like how this, these colors all work together. But there you go, you have examples of how someone painted something and what colors they used and see if it works for you before you commit to the to it. three hours so it takes the same amount of time to paint this as it does for me to paint one figure now what happens if I splash some of this up on the sides Does this be okay yeah, it's not very noticeable that's good some of that sand and they didn't wipe their feet properly they come up here to the temple there we go there's the tie-in all right let me put my glasses on so I can see what the hell I'm doing well, at a distance. Anyhow. Oh, fuck yeah, it looks great. <laughs> hey, the important thing is, well, in this case, Joe needs to be happy with it, but I need to be happy with it. I'm my own toughest customer many times. Now, we are going to need to go ahead and do a little black around the edge. Because I think it looks a lot better that way. Um, Boys. Where's my black? Black. Ah, <sighs> uh, yeah, we do need that. It's a lot easier to handle. Here it is. I remembered I left it upside down on purpose. And continue leaving it upside down. Okay. gonna be a foot high it's it's slow growing but it's doing really well so I guess that's a good thing we're just gonna run this across the edge I used to use dark brown but I think the black looks a lot better Again, something I saw people use. People started doing black and it looked better. Yeah, 
If you're happy using whatever color you're using, continue using that. And it's a rainy day and I don't care. I'm still going to spray this thing because I have never had a bad experience with spray paint. Oh, stuck right into your mouth. Yeah, if I mess this up, I got to paint another one for him. Wouldn't want to do that. The edges of this are upturned ever so slightly. And I don't know why. Maybe the bed got really hot. That this is sitting on it did that. I think I'll have this done in time for tomorrow. What do you think? Ziggurat. What'd you call me? A burr. Now, I want to be really crazy. Let's see, let me take. Let me take a look at it from. Yeah, I'm not gonna touch it. I'm not gonna touch it. I'm happy with how it is. It's gonna look even better when it gets sealed. I don't know what the magic of sealing things are, but it does look better. So there you go. You can do all your happy sacrificing there that you need to, to your whatever it is that you're into. But Okay, well, we're going to call this on a wrap because we finished right at the exact time of getting this guy done. So um, we'll catch you guys next time. Enjoy your Father's Day. Thanks for coming by. And... Uh, Hopefully take some pictures of this with a light box today and see how it turns out okay. Do does it does it do it justice? Um, it looks better to me than it does for you guys there on the screen. It's kind of washed out. This light kind of washes things out a little too much in the video for kickback feedback on the uh, on the on the brightness there. But um, we'll take some pictures of that and see if that works out. But anyways, until next time, happy painting and happy Father's Day. See you, folks. Bye-bye.